welcome back to Aging Well, a monthly production of Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. I'm your host, Nathan Lamb, and our topic for the show today is dementia caregiver training. And we're really fortunate today to have a couple of really knowledgeable guests in the studio who are here to talk with us about this topic. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Aguilo, the Executive Director of Pain Senior Services. And my name is Nathaniel Meyer, and I'm a social worker in the Adult Family Care Department of Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. Welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. you. And in addition to those roles, you guys are also involved with the really cool new program at Somerville Cambridge Elder Services that we're going to talk about today, the mm -hmm. Savvy Caregiver Program. Yes. And uh, I guess maybe start with a little intro of what Savvy Caregiver is all about. I'll defer to Nathaniel on that. Sure. She did all the background. Sure. Uh, so Savvy Caregiver is a, a, a nationwide program. It's uh, federally funded. Um, by the Administration for uh, uh, Family Living, and it's also funded by the Executive Office's Office of Elder Affairs. Um, and it's a program that is a research-based uh, program that trains caregivers of people who have dementia, um, Alzheimer's, or other forms of dementia. Um, and we've received training through uh, the Healthy Living Center of Excellence at Merrimack Valley Elder Services. Uh, we received training last year, and we provided our first training to caregivers uh, in, uh, the, at the end of the year, November and December of 2017. Congratulations on finishing up that Sure. Class. Thank yes. you. So um, <coughs> I know I wrote a little bit about this program when it came out, but for people who aren't familiar, what are some of the uh, basic ideas of this uh, program? Sure. The, the hallmark of the program, it's a 12-hour program. Um, so there are six two-hour trainings, and it's a way of learning about uh, dementia so that the caregiver has an understanding and can then just sort of adjust their approach to their the person they're taking care of mm -hmm. um, with the goal of really helping that person uh, continue to have some engagement in life all throughout the progression of the dementia. So it's different in that way. It's a very practical approach. Mm, absolutely. A big focus of the program <coughs> is on uh, both developing knowledge, as Liz mm -hmm. said, and working on, through over the course of the program, strategies that will help the caregiver both uh, sort of maintain their own sort of sanity and well-being um, and also uh, work better with the person they're, they're providing care for uh, to create a better environment for, for both of them. Absolutely. One of the things in writing about caregiving that I've noticed is that it's not really a um, circumstance everyone plans for. It's not like you go to caregiving school and suddenly you're right. a caregiver. A lot of times it's you're doing it um, out of necessity mm -hmm. and, and you're, you're learning on the fly. So <coughs> I imagine that's probably very helpful. Uh, a major sort of focus of the program is the understanding that this is a role that people are not expecting um, mm -hmm. and, and often not prepared for um, and often have, have difficulty sort of understanding and accepting what is, a, what is required of them. Um, mm -hmm. So this kind of training can be very important um, in helping develop that understanding um, and give people skills that this uh, that this new job requires and a lot of the focus mm -hmm. is that this is a job mm -hmm. um, that the, the the tasks and the roles that the, the caregiver needs to provide are numerous and mm -hmm. they're complicated and they can be stressful and challenging and with the right set of skills and understanding um, those become a lot more manageable it's mm -hmm. great I'm really glad that we're offering this to people um, and I thought before we go too much further, um, one thing I'd mention is, uh, how does it work? Is it, is it free? Is it drop-in? Do you sign up ahead of time? <coughs> it is a free class, um, so because each class sort of builds on the understanding and the skills that you gain from the prior classes. So uh, to really benefit from it the, the most, a caregiver should plan to be there for the entire six-week um, period. Um, but it is free, and we provide the training materials. So there uh, is a caregiver handbook, also the notes that we go over in class. Um, there's a point where we're really talking about helping people understand where where the person they're caring for, where are, where are they in the dementia process, and what does that mean? Mm -hmm. So it's not just about memory loss, but what does that mean as far as how much they can function? 
-hmm. And then what kind of supports can, can the caregiver give to help that person have as much success and independence as possible? Mm -hmm. And we will learn um, before the class begins, we do contact um, family members and, and when they, when they uh, want to attend the class, if they're interested, we do make sure that we have a phone con at least a phone conversation with them to make sure that this is uh, the right kind of program for them. It meets their needs um, and their schedule. Um, and so we do uh, speak with them to, and, and to ensure that this is a good fit. So one of the things we do want to make sure is that people who are attending are actively providing care for somebody who is um, showing some of the more significant symptoms of dementia. So people in maybe the early stages where there are very little signs might not necessarily get a lot out of the program, although they, might, they would be welcome to attend. So it's really geared towards people who are sort of entering what we could consider the middle or early middle uh, di uh, stage of the disease progress. Absolutely. I'm just curious, uh, we recently added the program. Can you tell me a little bit about how Savvy Caregiver came to Somerville Cambridge Elder Services? Were we contacted mm. by Merrimack Valley, I believe? So I, I know at least personally that uh, in the adult family care program we work with a number of uh, other ASAPs and um, we have clients in, in the uh, area around Merrimack Valley Elder Services um, I'm not exactly sure, I can't remember how we found out about it, but yeah. it was, we are providing services to clients with Alzheimer's and related dementia. Uh, and so we spoke with somebody at the Healthy Liver Living Center of Excellence, which is at Merrimack Valley Elder Services, mm -hmm. who told us about this training opportunity. Mm -hmm. Liz and I yeah. um, were both in very interested in becoming more knowledgeable and, and uh, developing our own skills to provide this training. And so they offered that training last year, and, and then we were able to offer our own group at the end of the year. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Um, and I guess the other one, I'd, oh, in one definition, ASAP is an aging services access point. Yes, thank you. Um, <coughs> just for the folks who might not know that one. Um, and you guys just completed the first session of the program. Um, can you tell me a little bit, you know, in, in a general sense, because we're very sensitive about people's privacy, mm -hmm. in a general sense, can you give me an idea <coughs> of some of the things that the people who participated in the first session got out of the program? Your thoughts on seeing them go through it. I'm curious how it was. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a hallmark of this particular program and the training is the, ho the homework, um, because the homework is very practical. It's very focused on uh, the caregiver working with their person. So the first part is really about understanding dementia at the different stages. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. And sort of sending caregivers home to really observe um, and uh, try to get a better sense of wh the person they're taking care of. Where are they in the stage? What does that look like? Um, what are the things they might need help with? What kinds of help um, they might need? And so we got a lot of, you know, we got great feedback from people who maybe had been caring for some, someone for a while, um, and even they found that there was just a lot to learn. And it's, it becomes very personalized, again, because the homework is go home, you know, work with your person, and then let's look at certain tasks um, that might be problematic, or certain times of day, like, t like dusk, sundowning, or the morning, um, and try to devise some sort of activity with your person. Uh, and it could be something very basic but essential, like bathing or helping with meal preparation. And how do you approach that in a way that um, lessens the frustration for them and lessens the frustration for you? And how do you kind of balance out that you have caregiving responsibilities for this person, but there are all other, there are a lot of other responsibilities you have, mm -hmm. and sort of balancing what's convenient, and um, but also helping the person you're caring for take part in daily activities. Mm -hmm. I think for a lot of participants, the uh, the beginning of the of the training, which focuses a lot on what the disease is and how the how the progression uh, works, uh, really, it was almost like a light bulb for going out for some mm -hmm. people, which is they really felt like, okay, so now I understand what I'm looking at. Now I understand what this expression means. Mm -hmm. And it really sh made a dramatic shift for some people in how they approached their person and the level of empathy they were able to, to develop for the person because they understood their experience. Uh, I think that was one of the biggest 
um, take home lessons that really uh, helped people throughout the through, through, through the program and the ac home activities and also I think going in, into the future as mm -hmm. they as they live day to day with the person they're caring for sounds like you guys really made a difference it's fantastic I think it was a great program it's a great yeah. uh, great training material it's very very satisfying um, we also try to emphasize self-care too so how do you take <coughs> care of yourself so that you can keep uh, doing what you need to do to take care of uh, take care of the person you're taking care of. Um, Always important. Yeah. yeah, and I think one of the surprising for me, it seems like sort of a basic understanding that the person you're taking care of has no control over the dementia, but neither do you. And being able to step back um, and sort of look at that takes a lot of, I think, burden off a lot of caregivers when they realize, you know, if things aren't going the way they they think it should be, it's no one's fault. It's not that person's fault, it's not the caregiver's fault. We just need to now recalibrate and think about how do we do this differently. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and the only other question was, I we talked a lot about this program, in terms of people signing up or uh, getting involved with the next session, do we have any word on when we're offering it again? Uh, we haven't settled on a date. We're looking at maybe February so that we just give um, enough time to, to do the outreach and also with the weather being a little unpredictable uh, we want to make sure we have enough time to plan. Mm. But yeah so we are expecting sometime in February um, and as Liz had mentioned earlier it's a six-week program so it is a six-week commitment it will likely be you know six consecutive weeks unless there are holidays that fall mm -hmm. within that time period uh, the last session was held on Fridays in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, we do want to make sure that it's a time that works best for people, though we know that there is no perfect mm -hmm. time of day. Um, sometimes it can be challenging for caregivers to get away. Mm -hmm. um, so if they don't have family support, somebody who can come in while they're attending the training, we may also have uh, respite support available. Um, we have some funding uh, to provide some respite for people who maybe don't have another family who's able to be with their person while they're attending our trainings. Definitely good <coughs> to know. And if they're curious, they should call the Aging Information Center. Do they refer to you guys or should they <coughs> uh, contact you guys directly? Yeah, they can contact the Aging mm -hmm. Information uh, Department at Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. They're familiar with the program. Mm -hmm. um, what they'll do is they have some basic screening questions they may ask and then they'll pass the information along to me and I will follow up with the person who calls. Aging information is awesome, absolutely. Yeah. A great team. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's all for our first segment. We'll be right back in a moment with some more Aging Well. <laughs> 